Luxembourg. It's a nation which sits in an important location between the French, German and Dutch speaking worlds. It's also not a very large country with a very small population, especially when compared to the major nations and kingdoms which have flanked it throughout its life. This raises an obvious question. Why does Luxembourg exist and why wasn't it incorporated into its larger neighbours? So, Luxembourg has been geographically important since the Middle Ages, back when it was a duchy and a part of the Holy Roman Empire. As of 1475, Luxembourg was in a union with the Duchy of Burgundy, and it was ruled by a man called Charles the Bold, whom the King of France was not a fan of due to Charles' immense influence there. In 1477, Charles did the French king a solid and died, and it took a whole six seconds for France to pounce and take these lands. To protect the remainder, Charles his sole heir, Mary, was married to the future Holy Roman Emperor Maximilian Habsburg. The remaining areas were consolidated and Luxembourg was incorporated into what's called the Habsburg Netherlands. These remained under the direct control of the Holy Roman Emperor until the 16th century, when Charles V abdicated the throne, giving them to Spain. It wasn't long until the Dutch decided that this arrangement wasn't for them, and so off they went, leaving Luxembourg as a part of the remaining Spanish Netherlands. In the 17th century, war with France saw Luxembourg shrink again, and after the War of the Spanish Succession, it got handed over to Austria and it remained with Austria until the French Revolution and its subsequent incorporation into the First French Republic in 1795. In the following two decades, there was a lot of war, a lot of Napoleon, the Holy Roman Empire was dissolved, and when the dust settled, Luxembourg's future was decided by the victors at the Congress of Vienna. Here, several things happened to Luxembourg. First, it came under the rule of William I, the king of the brand new United Kingdom of the Netherlands, and entered into a personal union with it. Second, it lost this territory to Prussia. Third, it was brought into the German Confederation, the sort of successor to the Holy Roman Empire, which gave it a sort of mixed constitution, with the nation being ran by William's Dutch administrators and defended or occupied by Prussian troops. And fourth, to make up for all of this, the Duchy of Luxembourg became the Grand Duchy of Luxembourg, because that way William couldn't complain. Now, it wasn't long until the United Kingdom of the Netherlands broke up, with Belgium leaving and taking this massive chunk of Luxembourg with it, giving it its modern borders. It stayed under the control of the Dutch king, who soon found himself in serious financial problems. To the rescue came Napoleon III, who in 1867 offered him a bunch of cash for Luxembourg, which he accepted. Now, Otto von Bismarck, the Chancellor of the North German Confederation, objected. To prevent war, Britain and Russia arbitrated and came up with a solution. This saw Luxembourg remain independent and further declare itself to be forever neutral. It would remain under the control of the Dutch monarchy, and it was also awarded that North German troops would withdraw, and in return, Berlin would get extra economic concessions. Luxembourg would continue to be ruled by the Dutch monarchy until Wilhelmina took the throne in 1890. The Grand Duchy didn't permit for women in its line of succession, and so it went to Adolf of Nassau. This state of now independent neutrality remained until 1914 when German troops invaded and World War I. After the war, the Entente didn't really know what to do with Luxembourg, except for the Belgians who really wanted to annex it. The French said no, and the remaining members reaffirmed Luxembourgish neutrality in 1920, which would last a whopping 20 years. This time, when the Germans came knocking for a second time, Luxembourg wasn't just occupied, but also incorporated into Germany itself. This of course wouldn't last, because Germany lost the Second World War, and Luxembourg was restored, and it would remain independent to this day. Although it would renounce its permanent neutrality and became a member of NATO and the European Economic Community shortly afterwards. And that is how Luxembourg still exists. I hope you enjoyed this episode and a special thanks to my patrons. James Bizanet, The Pastry Section, Danny Maloney, Marvin Cassell, Kelly Moneymaker, Rob Waterhouse, John Bizquez, Mo, James Castaneda, Aaron the Whites, Jordan Longley, Marcus Arsner, Gustav Swan, Jerry Lambdin, John Bailey, Colin Castleman, Rashid Ali, Spinning Three Plates, Fielder Oink Oink, Maggie Patskowski, David Silverman, Izzy, Lexi Schwinn, Robert Wetzel, Sky Chappelle, Spencer Lightfoot and Winston Kaywood.